Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. We finally got our hands on an ARC A770 from Intel. But to figure out how we actually got this, we need to jump in the old Gear Seekers time machine. Let's go. I'm going to buy some hardware because there's one particular video card I've not been able to get my hands on and we didn't get sent one but I really really wanted one so I decided that I'd go out and buy an Intel Arc A770 because there's heaps of things I want to do with it and I promised you guys that we would do some like benchmarking with encoding and you know like testing it for gaming and stuff like that I just really wanted to know but the other thing is it's been a long time since you could build a completely Intel gaming PC. So that's what we're gonna to go to today. I'm gonna to go pick up the A770 and we're gonna build our first, well, not my first, but our first fully Intel gaming PC in, I don't know, 20 years. Rolling up to M-Wave. They actually have a bunch of A770s in stock. Pre-purchase one on the internet. I mean, that's how it works, right? You buy things and then you pick stuff up. I actually got parking here for once, which is <laughs> kind of incredible. Here's the thing, I don't think M-Wave's really sold that many A770s, so it turns out it's in like a single box, which adds to the mystery. Do we actually have an A770 in here? I didn't want to open it. Oh, it's a journey. See you, Claire. Bye. <laughs> Why am I like this? You've been waiting for it, I've been waiting for it. Let's build an all Intel gaming PC. Ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this full Intel gaming PC build with the Intel Arc A770. I've just got to mention as well, we bought this GPU because we just couldn't get one any other way. And I actually did a fair amount of benchmarking with this that I'm going to share in this video as well, but I actually wanted to show you something that I thought was quite interesting because I've seen reports from people saying that the performance is a bit underwhelming. I don't actually think that's the case. And again, this is not sponsored. This is just something that I think people have got too accustomed to having the top end stuff all of the time for gaming performance. And actually that's not what the A770 is all about. Yes, it's Intel's top tier graphics card, but that is not where it's aimed. So I wanna show you 
the gaming performance in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 because I did play this quite a bit yesterday when I was testing and I think you're going to be surprised by the performance here because I think it's better than what you're expecting. So we'll play a few different ways. I'll show you the game at 4K and at 1440p with XESS on as well. Obviously you want to use the upscaling technology because it's optimized for this card. But let, let's, let's show you what this actually plays like. As you can see, I've played Modern Warfare 2 quite a bit. I'm already max level and I was away for a week. So, you know, that's how that goes. I'll show you the graphics settings. So what I've done here is obviously you can see Intel Arc A770 and we can scroll down and you can just see everything that is just, it's basically just default settings other than the FOV because I'm a 120 FOV kind of guy. If we look at the quality settings, I actually set this to recommend it. There's a little bit of a bug at the moment with XESS and Call of Duty where if you don't use a quality preset, this won't enable and your game will crash out. Just scroll through all the settings here. Everything is set to high except for a couple things like shadow map resolution and these things. So actually this is quite good because this gives you a good indication of the performance of what Warzone 2 will be like for those people who always ask us about Warzone performance. And not only that, the game now has a built-in benchmarking mode. We can actually test benchmarks in this game now in a consistent and repeatable way, which is quite nice to have. But you can see the frame rate counter is in the top left-hand side. So I'm just gonna jump into a match here. <laughs> Look at the face, Claire. <laughs> Look at the telemetry at the top, because this will give you the real indication. I mean, just keep an eye on that frame rate counter. This is at 1440p, mind you, as well with the recommended settings, with XESS. Why don't they just call it ZSS? That would have made so much more sense because you know, X and E is Z. Disregard my, my gaming skill right now. I'm not really good right now. And my aim is terrible because this is not my mouse. I have like the most, I'm trying to level this thing up at the moment. This shotgun I was using last night. This is a Skrillex song, Bangarang. I think most of the time we're sitting above 75 frames per second at 1440p with recommended settings and XASS and with the upscaling tech, this stuff is really, really good. Like I am, I'm constantly forgetting that I'm recording right now. We'll go 4K, right? Just to show you guys, All right? No smoke and mirrors, you saw me changing it, All right? So now, I mean, the frame rate isn't, heaps better, but this is playable online. Obviously it's not like eSports frame rates, but it's definitely playable. We did see the GPU timing with the telemetry raise a little bit, but this is definitely playable. Oh, don't come for me, don't come for me. He saw me and... No, no, <laughs> no. Graphically, this map is quite taxing as well, which is why they use it for the benchmarking scene. But look, we're seeing right now, we're seeing 60, or well, we were seeing 60, but. So what you're seeing here is, I think I actually had this set to visual quality, but what happens if we switch this to straight up performance? Now, you'll see all the level of details being lowered. Now for a game like this, the detail is not that important, especially when you're playing online. That's why you'll see a lot of people who play esports titles run on the lower settings for the maximum frame rate. We're playing on Crown Raceway with Hardpoint, with the performance settings at 4K. Be aware of the FPS count on the top left hand side. Don't worry about me dying. I'm probably not gonna play too well this round because I really dislike this map. As you're seeing in performance mode, we're getting much higher frame rates and I'm also getting much higher death rates. But how is this going to go at 1440p and this is where it gets really interesting. 1440p, apply. Look at that, over 100 frames per second at 1440p with the performance settings. Now for any graphics card with a game that is quite visually intensive like this game is, this is running really, really good. I'm not playing good, but this is running really good. And this is definitely playable with this texture quality and resolution settings. This is actually really playable. I like it. I would play this game like this. I actually think that these graphics cards are quite good value for what they are, especially because they're not aimed 
like me right now with my gun, <laughs> they're not aimed at being the best. They're aimed at being affordable. Now I haven't seen any weird like over the top graphical glitches here. This runs quite well. We're running above 100 frames per second most of the time at 1440p. And yeah, there's plenty of graphic cards that can do this as well, but not from Intel. One thing I didn't realize as well, I bought this graphics card yesterday and it turns out, right, I now own another copy of MW2 because they're giving away like a free copy with this. No, not sponsored. I just thought I'd mention it in case you're looking at getting this graphics card. You will get a copy of this game when you buy this graphics card. I don't know how long that's going to last, but yeah, I mean, I'm going to use the other copy for the test bench because this is my personal copy that I play like actual matches on, which is probably not very clever, but you know. It is what it is. Okay, the gaming performance is fairly decent, but I did run some of the canned benchmarks that we usually run so you guys can get an idea of the performance. Now I ran these with XESS on and off just to show you a little bit of comparison. Not all of these benchmarks support this, but the ones that don't, I used FSR because it's right there. But the only annoying thing about this is the new Cyberpunk patch just came out like an hour ago that has FSR 2.1. We've only got FSR 1 in these tests because I did this like a day or two ago. But let's take a look at those benchmarks right now. There you have it. Now, if you're interested in any of the parts in this build, I'll put a PC part picker list down below in the description so you guys can peruse that at your own leisure. And if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music, it's available by clicking that join button down below. Make sure you get yourself subscribed and all that good stuff if you wanna see more videos like this because I actually kind of enjoy doing it in this format. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I am your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek. And despite what I've seen about the A770, I think for the money, it's a pretty compelling GPU. And to be honest, it's a little bit exciting because it's something different from someone who hasn't made GPUs in over 20 years. And I'm all about seeing new stuff because that's what gets me excited. Thanks for watching.